All right, wonderful. Uh, sir, you have the screen for yourself now. Let us know when we can start the timer. Sure, can you see the screen? Yes, we can. Second. Okay. All right, we'll go ahead and start. In 2008, in 2008, I went to the hospital to see my dad for the last time. He never got to see me graduate with my master's in data science. He lived alone in New York while I was in Texas, and he would call and tell me he was fine while hiding his health condition from me. He didn't want me to worry too much. He lived on the second floor of, of an apartment building during the last year of his life, and he was too weak to walk. He was high risk, but the insurance companies didn't know. The gap, the, this gap cost the insurance companies several hundred thousand dollars at the ICU, and it cost my dad his life. Our healthcare system needs to do better. We are looking at $3.8 trillion spent every year, and yet US healthcare is falling behind. Every year we spend more money, the results are the same. There's a fundamental flaw in the way health insurance companies are doing business. Today, the insurance company takes a list of patients and then they run them through their in-house classification rules engine. This separates the patients into different risk categories and flags them for outreach. Clinical outreach teams deploy various programs like meal delivery and other outreach services. But the issue here is that insurance companies are not tech companies. They don't know how to make this process any better. So why can't they make it better? What else do they need? The answer is SDOH, Social Determinants of Health. Companies are just using claims data and minimal demographics data for their risk assessments. SDOH makes up 80 to 90% of the data that determines health outcomes, like the fact that living in an apartment with stairs increases the risk if you have mobility issues. Insurance companies don't use any of this information. How can you possibly predict anything with 80% of the data missing? So if you could improve the way you classify your patients as an insurance company, you can then provide targeted services to patients that truly need it. This will then decrease the chance of adverse health events for your patient pool. That means saving potentially hundreds of millions and most importantly, saving lives. So that's where we come in. We're building a proprietary SDOH powered database using bleeding edge techniques in machine learning, artificial intelligence and graph theory to create a data source like no other. This allows us to create risk classification models that utilize the full potential of all the data available and new data that we've imputed using our proprietary tech to make classifications better than anything the insurance companies can do on their own. This also allows us to create prediction models that can forecast emergency room visits. <laughs> Lastly, this data changes the way case managers can work with patients, giving insights about a person's living conditions before even talking to them. We call these products risk assist, predict plus, and person intuition. The healthcare AI market is very new and is projected to grow to 53 billion before the end of 2027. I want you to come and join us on this journey to change healthcare. Thank you so much. You're very sorry for your loss, but I want to say that, you know, you've taken it in the right way possible and your dad up in the heaven is definitely looking at you and giving you two thumbs up like I'm right now. So good luck with that. All right, panel, let's hear it. Fantastic product, fantastic story. Uh, you know, sorry for the loss again, but uh, great, uh, great presentation overall. Thank you. So I, I have a question regarding the efficiency of the algorithm. So uh, what is the reduction of, you know, false assessments in, in the customers that you've tried your product with? We are currently building our MVP. We've uh, collated our data set and done the imputations. We're currently in the process of building our algos, but we've done some initial assessments and we think we're about 10 to 15% better than the current risk uh, rules-based solutions that are um, deployed at healthcare companies right now. So what is the number of total elements that you feed into your algorithm before you decide the risk credit or, or sort of risk classification of a patient? What was the uh, the first question? Can you say that one more time? Uh, I'm sorry, it was one question. So, uh, how how many elements do you measure before you do risk assessment of a patient? Like, what elements do you take in consideration? Uh, 
Yeah, we have hundreds of thousands of data points that we have that insurance companies don't have. We are collecting data from all over the world. We're using graph theory to impute additional data sets and we're connecting um, a whole bunch of different statistical data that necessarily you wouldn't think to have connections. We're building all of that using graph theory. So we have um, at least a couple of orders of magnitude more data than um, anything health, health insurance companies have. Okay, and, and final question, the, the cohort of data, where do you get it from? Because it seems like you're not targeting individual points, but you're tackling pools of data, right? Yeah, our data comes from everywhere. Um,